Welcome to the Comic Story and Shadow, where we take some of your favorite narratives from video games to movies to comic books, and we break them down into an audio drama, allowing you to listen to them on your long drive or while playing your favorite video game, catching you up on your favorite pop culture elements while allowing you to lead your busy life. You see here, we also have a series called the Full Story Series, where we go into some of our older playlists, videos that have been around for a while, and we put them together to give you a long, enjoyable narrative. And today, we're going to be bringing you Immortal Hulk 1-13. through 13. That is the story of Hulk going to hell, and we discover exactly what this creepy, weird version of the Hulk is. It's one of my favorite storylines from Marvel recently, and I know a lot of you enjoyed it as well. So let's get you caught up so that we can continue the storyline and see where it's going next. Enjoy! The Hulk Goes to Hell! In the middle of nowhere, Arizona, a man named Tommy nervously pulls up to the Roxxon gas station, trying to find the courage to do what he must. Across the lot, a mother calls out to her daughter to make sure that whatever she is buying is healthy. The daughter rolls her eyes, telling her, okay. Inside the store is another nameless man, reading a magazine off of the shelf. And as the daughter reaches into the cooler, she notices the nameless man staring at her and asks if he has a problem. The nameless man puts down his magazine and he begins to leave. But the daughter scoffs when he says, excuse me, and passes by. But as that happens, Tommy finally builds up his nerves, and he runs into the store with a face covered, holding a gun. Tommy tells the clerk to not hit the alarms, just, just open the register. The clerk says, sure, sure, anything he can. Just then, the daughter sees what's happening. She drops her bottle, causing it to smash on the ground. The sound startles Tommy, and he spins around, and he fires his gun. The daughter grabs her chest as she falls to the ground, and all Tommy can do is stand there, frozen. The nameless man looks at the young girl, stating that he just... See? And he looks up. His eyes, they turn bright green, but before Bruce could change into the Hulk, he's shot in the forehead. The clerk holds up his arms, begging Tommy not to do it. He still hasn't hit the alarm yet, but Tommy points the gun at the clerk, and he pulls the trigger. Later, Detective Gloria Mays tells reporter Jackie McGee that their first victim was Sandra Ann Brockhurst, 12. The clerk was Josh Alfaro, age 22, and the third, he's a... John Doe, probably someone local, but he does have a familiar face. Jackie scribbles her notes into her pad, asking if they're okay with that being posted tomorrow. And Gloria says, hopefully that will loosen some lips and get people talking. But while the crime scene is being processed, the three bodies are transported to the morgue. However, Bruce's body slowly begins to change green and his arm raises. A short while later in another part of the town at an abandoned home, Tommy explains that he didn't want any of that stuff to happen. He just, and the gun went off. Joe, the leader of the small biker gang, sits down telling him, Yeah, real shame, but uh, how much did you get? Tommy cries, asking, What? And Joe says, Come on, how much did you get? Tommy tells him he's not sure, maybe a few hundred. Joe says, Okay then, you can start paying me back the interest in what you owe me. I'm gonna let things slide for now. I got myself a real nice family. Everyone begins to laugh, and Joe pushes Tommy out, telling him to make sure to bring the rest of the money. Don't bring him another sob story! All right? Tommy turns to hurry and leave, but before he could go outside, there's a loud THOOM and a tremor that sends everyone to the ground. Joe stumbles back, telling everyone to grab their guns and check on the generator. A few members of the gang run out, stating that the generator's been destroyed, and another says that he thinks he sees something. Seconds later, the man screams, and Joe shouts, What the hell is that? A third member runs in yelling that there's a devil out there. Something big. Joe cracks the man across the head telling him to shut up. He's just another method. Everyone gather up. We're ending this now. The remaining members all point their guns at the door. And through the wall, a pair of giant green arms burst through grabbing Joe. Outside, Tommy is running to his car, breathing heavy as he searches for the keys to put into the lock. But the shouting scares him and he drops them. He then hears nothing. He looks at the dark house, and he pulls out his gun, asking, is, is anyone there? Hello? Anyone? And just then, a giant shadow looms over Tommy in the moonlight, and the Hulk says, Sandra and Burkhurst. That was her name, and she was 12. Tommy stumbles back, and the Hulk says, How does it feel in your hand? Heavy, right? All that stopping power? Heavier than it was at the range, even. Tommy tells him no, and the Hulk goes on. 
You're probably wondering, right? All that power. What would happen if he just let loose? Tommy holds up his gun and he begins to shoot. But as the bullets pling off of the Hulk, he says, You know, you should have shot someone who deserved it. But do you know what I found? It's because you've been lying to yourself. I can smell a liar. Tommy drops the gun yelling, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I'll go to the police, just, just I have a family. I have a little girl. Didn't you ever make a mistake, please? I'm not a bad guy, am I? The Hulk smiles as he reaches down asking Tommy, what do you think? The next morning, Bruce wakes up and gets cleaned up. And as he washes his hands, he tells himself, I'm not a bad person, am I? He looks in the mirror and he sees the Hulk staring right back at him, asking him, what do you think? While avoiding the prying eyes of many, Bruce Banner spends a lot of time alone, often in a small room. But as he wakes from his nightmare, he tells himself that it's not the bomb that he dreams about, it's the waiting. Being trapped in a tiny room with a Geiger counter. The radiation that he's taken and nobody could survive this. They call it the walking ghost phase. You feel like you're healthy, like you're not dead, but death is coming. It's coming in the form of a hissing Geiger counter. It crackles, it laughs at him, and it won't shut up. It won't leave him alone. It just won't leave him alone. As he blinks, he looks out the bus window. Did he just say all that stuff out loud? It doesn't really matter, the bus is mostly empty. Nobody to give a fitfully sleeping stranger a second look. But that's the third night in a row with the same dream. He should just stop sleeping, or at least at night. The night is his time. The bus makes a stop and Bruce feels an itch in the back of his skull. His seat is no longer comfortable. It's a sign. There's something here for him. Bruce heads into the diner to get something to eat and try to enjoy one of the few things that he can enjoy. Eating. The taste, the smell, everything about it. He can still enjoy it, even with him. Looking back at him. But it isn't so bad now. He just finds ways to use that power inside. Ways to use him to bring a measure of justice to this world. A way to atone for his sins. Bruce heads out and he looks down at the papers and he sees the headline. Hulk cited by a reporter named Jackie McGee from the Arizona Herald. Bruce looks around. Should he run? Will someone recognize him? He looks down and he sees the local paper with the headline, Mystery deaths are nothing to worry about. Yes, that's something he's interested in. Nobody should recognize him, so he should be able to ask around and he'll start at the bars. He asks the bartender about these deaths and one of the patrons says that he knows exactly what it is. It's grief. Four people have fallen to the same thing. They lose someone, they bury them. They fall into grief. After that, the sickness comes. It's like a chain of sickness. Soon the whole town will be grieving. What then? The bartender tells the man to give it a rest. She doesn't need him scaring off the clientele. And Bruce asks, What started this chain of grief? A man lowers his glass, telling him, That's easy. It was when the fry boy died. The bartender tells the man to hush. And Bruce says, Who's that? The bartender takes out her phone and says that she should have a picture of him. His name was Del Fry. Prom king, star quarterback, you name it, he was the best at it. He died of some embolism or something, just kneeled over and died. Nice kid. Rich too. His father was a doctor, invented something or made it better. Something like that, what was it, medical treatment? Cancer treatment? Nah, radiation treatment. When Bruce hears those words, the itch returns, focused on a single point, right where the arrow that killed him went in. It wasn't long ago that Bruce had asked an acquaintance to fire a special kind of arrow into his brain. It was a complex situation, but he needed to know if he could die. The arrow did a lot of damage, and he's not sure that he's fully healed, but now his other thinks he's smarter. Bruce wanders through the town cemetery, and he finds himself stopping at Del Fry's grave, with something telling him that it all started right here. Something in this place, in the air, the soil, something he recognizes. Something he doesn't want to recognize. Something that's a part of him. Bruce stumbles back, stating no, 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 no. He runs to a payphone calling the police, stating that it's gamma radiation emitting from the grave. Anybody visiting it is in danger of acute radiation syndrome. It's like a flu at first, food poisoning, but it's also called the walking ghost phase. No, he doesn't have an exact reading. No, he can't give you his name. You know what? Fine. You want my name? It's Robert Bruce Banner, and don't make me angry. 
He hurries knowing that that got their attention. And there's still something else though. He saw it on the way in. A flash of green in the distant mountain. He begins to climb the side of that mountain, inching closer and closer to the source of that green light. And as he climbs into a cave, he sees the body scattered about with a voice stating that they are so sorry. Bruce asks, Dr. Fry? And the bright green radioactive body of Dr. Fry lunges forward, telling Bruce, I'm sorry, but I can't let anyone find me. As Dr. Fry holds Bruce down by his neck, he thinks to himself, he wanted to know if he could die, and he could. With that, there's a loud crack as Bruce's arms turn green, and the Hulk jumps up, slamming Dr. Fry into the ground. Sure, Bruce Banner can die, but the Hulk can't. Dr. Fry shouts, oh god, you're Dr. Banner! The Hulk picks up Dr. Fry asking, Are you trying to piss me off? Your kid, what's his name, Dell? It started with him, didn't it? And don't lie, I can smell a liar. Dr. Fry pauses for a moment and tells him, He, he was afraid of death. I never really thought of it until my wife Claire died. I wondered what the afterlife was like. I just couldn't imagine it. All the joys of touch and taste and smell, the thought of it all just gone. I couldn't let that happen. So I threw myself into my work. Everyone saw Dr. Banner as a cautionary tale, but not me. I made minor improvements to the conventional cancer treatments, but the real work, I kept that to myself. Human testing began with me and it went perfectly. After a month of initial injection, I felt 10 years younger. The gamma-powered healing factor had no side effects, and my son was going pro. With all the injuries that he could face, I couldn't wait. So I injected him and something happened. He said he saw a green door and someone was looking back at him. It's below us. That's when he fell over and he was dead within seconds. After that, I destroyed the serum. Nobody suspected me, so I never had to confess. The Hulk scoffs. I've got it from here. So you hid yourself in the middle of nowhere, and between killing anyone who found you, you began to wonder why. Why did you live? Well, science is the other guy, but maybe you built up a tolerance, created your very own walking ghost phase. That's the irony of it all. You're afraid of death, and now you are death. You loved your son, but you put him in a grave. Dr. Fry cowers. Oh, God! And Hulk tells him, Yeah, now you're getting it. He's radioactive. Six feet of Earth isn't enough to contain that. Everyone who goes to Mourn walks away with a fatal dose and becomes a walking ghost. How many has it been, Dr. Fry? How many have to die because you were scared? Dr. Fry backs up. Please, I've made mistakes. I don't want to die! The Hulk laughs. <laughs> Uh, is that so? Well, you made your bed. It's time to lie in it. Moments pass and as Dr. Fry opens his eyes, he begins to rub his face, but nothing comes. His arms, his legs, they are gone. And now he's buried deep beneath within the mountain where he can live and never die. If you listen closely in the dead of the night, you can hear him begging, begging. Death is better. Please, please let me die. With news of Hulk being sighted across the United States, Arizona Herald reporter Jackie McGee visits the last known place where Bruce Banner has been seen, South Dakota. She sits down with the different members of the community to get their take on what happened when they ran into the Hulk. The first person, the cop, says that he's got a story for her. They just got a call about a crime in progress at the old church at Mercer Avenue. What they didn't expect though was Hot Shot, the human ray gun. Hotshot disarmed them and they needed themselves a real hero to handle things. Next up was the bartender. He recalled an event when Bruce came into his bar. He looked out of place, clothes didn't fit, he had the look of a serial killer. He got angry about something and then when he saw something going on at Mercer Avenue on TV, he grabbed a knife. Obviously he was like, whoa, and then he ran out the door. The next person was an old lady. Her view of things were a little, well, different than what others saw. She was at a church when Hotshot came in. When he burst in, he shouted that his love was dying. The priest said that he needed to turn himself in and then he yelled that nobody understands love. The boy really did look like James Dean though. Finally, Jackie visits the priest to get his side of the story. Unlike what the old woman said, he could somewhat understand what Hotshot was saying when he broke into the church. He was clearly upset stating that the devil was inside of his girlfriend. Something about something underneath below everything got into her and they needed an exorcism or something. He then went back to it stating something about a door below, a 
green door below. What does it even mean? The cops arrived stating that they would get someone to negotiate, but at that point, Hot Shot started to lose it. He asked God for salvation. The answer he sent, well, it was big, it was green, and it was angry. The old woman goes on stating that it was horrible. The giant beast came in and broke the hands of that handsome young man. The cop continues the story stating that after the Hulk literally disarmed Hotshot, Hotshot still had more tricks up his sleeve. The priest said, oh God, he couldn't look away. He could see right through him. His chest was ripped wide open. They all waited for him to fall, but instead the hole just regrew itself and the look on his face. The boy said what everyone was thinking. It's you, you're the shadow, you're the one below all, the devil himself. The cop laughs asking, you know what the big guy said? The Hulk said, you're damn right, and he clobbered him good. The next part, well, yeah, the next part wasn't so fun. The priest says that he and the officer went to the motel where the boy was staying. He saw the body. She was smiling at them when they went in. It was a peaceful smile. Green door was written on the wall. He wasn't able to pray since that day. What does that mean? Lastly, the old woman finishes her story, stating that she went to visit the young man, and he said that it wasn't him who killed her. He did tie her to the chair because her power was out of control. He would never. She was alive when he left. He loved her. They just gotta believe him. As it turned out, the young man found a way to hang himself in his cell. Such a tragedy. Ah well, T. Jackie sighs as she sits back in her chair asking what is she supposed to do with all of this. Three people with three stories, all of them the same story though. They just have different perspectives as to what happened and at the center of it all, the Hulk. She receives a call from an unknown number. She picks it up. And the voice in the other line states is this Jacqueline McGee from the Arizona Herald. She asks, who is it? And the man says, Walter Lakowski. He works for Alpha Flight, the international space team, or he did. Anyway, he's been reading her recent articles and it would seem that she's the only person actively looking for Bruce Banner, apart from him, that is. Why? Well, Bruce is an old college buddy of his. He wants him to know, if they're being totally honest here, he could use her particular expertise. Right, exactly. There's something that he wants her to take a look at. Several days later at a bus station in South Dakota, Jackie McGee sits telling her boss no, they cannot change the pricing. They were the ones who broke the story, now everyone's sniffing green blood in the air. If they want to stay in the race, it's not enough to just chase Banner, they need him. No, this has nothing to do with what happened back then. Look, if they can't get Banner, the next best thing is his college roommate. Just then Walter walks up with a suitcase stating hi. I'm Walter or Sasquatch if you prefer, carried it his own hairy half a Hulk turned space diplomat and Bruce Banner's college roommate. Pleasure to meet you all. Jackie gets up shaking Walter's hand stating that she's sorry she was just speaking to her editor and there was a fresh Hulk sighting. Walter laughs telling her, I guess we're going to be doing this on the move. What do you want to know first? As the two jump in the car, Jackie asks how about they start with how Walter and Bruce Banner met. Walter tells her, well, it was at Pet State. Bruce transferred there for a semester since they have lab facilities that the Desert State didn't have. Jackie asks, Gamma facilities? And Walter laughs, haha, yep. Even back then, Bruce is all about that thing. Bruce needed a research assistant and there I was, a football scholarship and a head for physics. We got along like a house on fire. Sure, we had some disagreements every once in a while, but his mother died and his father was in an institute, so he held a lot in. One day he even gave all of his clothes to Goodwill and bought 10 identical suits like Einstein did. Never understood why they were purple pants though. Well, time passed and eventually it happened. Bruce had done it. The atomic scientist had become the Hulk. That's when things began to get serious. Long story short, I quit football and I made it my mission to duplicate what Bruce did. Ever been hit by a gamma bomb? It's a real trip. Jackie asks a trip, huh? And then remembers back to when she was a little girl and her father told her not to look. Do not look him in the eye. Except she did. Walter then says that he knows that look in her eye, and that's why he did what he did. The thinking was that his Hulk could counter Bruce's Hulk. Bruce had brains and no strength, where he had strength and not so much brains. It was supposed to be a deterrent for Canada. For the world, really. But his personality would remain in control. If she couldn't tell, he's a pretty laid back guy, not prone to anger. He went north to do some testing and the controlled gamma bombardment did something they didn't expect. Something outside conventional science. It opened something, a kind of door. A world of beasts and demons. One of them got into him. Tanarok. It was a long time ago and Tanarok's dead and I'm in control of Sasquatch now, really. A few moments later, the two pull up to the scene of a three-car pileup and Walter says, It looks like the Hulk School of Vehicle Maintenance showed up. Jackie begins to take pictures, stating, Okay, we gotta look for a bar. Bruce is always getting his information from bars. A short while later, Jackie holds up a photo of Bruce and the waitress says, Yeah, that's him. Asking all sorts of questions about Noah Swanson. Jackie says, she spoke with one of the officers and Noah was a meth dealer. 
It's his van out there mashed up with all his cars, isn't it? As Jackie interviews the waitress, a fight then begins to break out with two of the bar patrons. Walter hurries over to separate the two of them, asking what's going on. What's got them all riled up on such a nice day? The man with the bandage on his nose says, Him! He knows all about it! Walter turns and asks the second man what he's talking about. But while Walter is looking in the other direction, the man with the bandage pulls out a knife and he stabs Walter in the back. Walter falls to the ground and the man with the bandage shouts that he, he, he didn't mean to. The second man yells that they gotta go, they just killed a man! And later in the hospital, Jackie gives the detective the details as to what happened. The detective jots down her statement and asks if she can remember anything else, be sure to call them. And if she does find Bruce Banner, they would like to talk to him as well. The detective walks off and Jackie sighs, stating, yeah, she would too. Just then a man sits down next to her, stating, good timing then, here I am! What happened to Walter? Jackie sits right up in her seat, not making eye contact with Bruce Banner. She says that Walter's in surgery. He was stabbed while they were looking for him. What are you doing here, Mr. Banner? Bruce tells us that he followed a hunch. All humans emit radiation. Simple biophonics, really. Barely measurable. But the gamma affected, they have unique signatures. Walter's is just like his. Jackie asks, so you can sense him? And Bruce says, no, but he can. Inside the operating room, the doctor stops working and says that he's gonna call it time of, oh, oh my god. Walter's body begins to change into Sasquatch and Bruce tells her, it's nighttime now. And nighttime is his time. You need to evacuate the hospital now. The doctors all huddle together, stating, oh god, above. But Sasquatch stops them, stating, god above, no, quite the reverse. Jackie says, wait a minute, I, I got questions for you. you, you owe me. Bruce tells her, yeah, I owe a lot of people, something from stolen pants to ruined lives. Where you fall on that spectrum, we'll have to wait. Yeah, what are you going to do, tell people to run from a man who's risen from the dead? Why would anyone believe you? Just then, screaming can be heard from the operating room, and Bruce tells her, you're a reporter. It's your job to make people believe you. Besides, screaming will probably help. He pushes open the doors to the operating room and says, hello, Walter. Can we talk? Sasquatch lips the blood from his claws and he looks back. I am not Walter. He swipes cutting Bruce's throat, telling him, and I would rather talk to the real you. Bruce falls to the ground with Sasquatch asking, it hurts to die, doesn't it? Bruce coughs up blood, telling him, always. <laughs> but as the Hulk comes out, he says, you hurt Banner, I take it personally. He jumps up, punching Sasquatch, telling him, You're not Lakowski. That fits. Lakowski's a creep. Smug little know-it-all. The Hulk throws Sasquatch through a wall, finishing, But Lakowski never had three murders in him. You're something else, aren't you? See, nobody's ever loved Walt for his mind. They only wanted the jock. He only feels needed when he's a furry. Stays that way for months. Am I getting warm? Sasquatch thrusts his claws into the Hulk's chest, telling him, Very clever, little monster. Hulk pulls out Sasquatch's arm, telling him, Lakowski stayed Sasquatch too long, left the door open, and you got in. In through a green door. You got into Hotshot's girlfriend too, didn't you? What was that about? Why did you want my attention? What are you? Tenorak, Mephesto, something worse? Who's in there? Sasquatch laughs, telling him, <laughs> Look in the mirror behind you. Hulk starts to look back, stating, Real original. And when he looks, he sees himself holding Brian Banner, Bruce Banner's father. Hulk pauses and says, Daddy? Brian lashes out at the Hulk, telling him, Don't you remember? You've known what would happen since the beginning. Those brilliant intuitive leaps from the day you were born, it was you. The monster inside. I should have killed you while you slept in the crib. Sasquatch slams Hulk into a wall and Hulk tells him, It's not him. It can't be. And Brian tells him, You see the ghost and smell eyes, don't you? You'd know if it wasn't true. I'm the father that Bruce killed. Back through the green door. Back from death. Brian jabs his claws into the Hulk's stomach, asking, How does it feel? That's the proof. Who else would hurt you like this? Who else? and make the monster scared. Hulk shouts, no, never! And he kicks Brian in the face. Hulk gets up telling him, you're just a man, a man who killed his wife and tried to kill his son. You scare Banner. You think that gives you power over me? You think that makes you special? <laughs> Not special, puny, puny human. Hulk punches Brian through a wall yelling, you're nothing, any power you have someone gave you. Who, who brought you back? Who opened the door? Tell me or I'll smash. Brian starts to get up stating that it needs a host personality to work in this world. It burrows in, wears our souls like masks on a stage. Help me. 
Hulk shouts, asking, what does that mean? What's behind you? Hulk punches again, and Brian catches the hit, telling him, every light casts a shadow. Every mirror there is a reflection, as above, as below. He stabs his claws into the Hulk's eyes, telling him, take a look. You'll see darker shadows than your own. He continues ripping into the Hulk, asking, how many do you have to? And then he stops and he feels something shoot into his arm. He looks back to see a security officer with a taser and says, well, boy, there's one more. He whips his arm back, tearing through the security guard, telling Jackie, remember this, it's the monster's fault. He holds his arms up to swipe at Jackie, but the Hulk grabs him, stating, Gamma. Gamma is what made Lakowski what he is. Keeps the green door open, doesn't it? But the difference between me and you, I eat Gamma. Hulk grabs onto his body, absorbing all of the Gamma radiation until Sasquatch begins to revert into Walter. As Jackie helps lay Walter out, Hulk says that he just took all of Lakowski's radiation, no more Sasquatch, no more dad, or whatever that was. She checks his pulse and says that the Hulk saved him. The Hulk rubs his eyes, telling her, shut up. You're with the local paper and you drove over how many states and you can't even look Banner in the face? Yeah, I noticed. Whatever this is to you, whatever he owes you, it's personal. The truth now. She looks back stating that when she was 15, the Hulk destroyed her home, her neighborhood. They said to never look him in the eye, but she did. And she has questions. He stares for a moment in silence and tells her, Fine, one question, make it quick. She gets up asking her one question. How does she do it? How does she get to be what he is? He stares back for a few seconds and then turns telling her, just go home. As he leaves the hospital, he looks at his reflection in the car window and what he sees is Brian Banner. Now he sits at the edge of his motel bed and he thinks of back to the first time, the first time that he died. He couldn't stop screaming, so he got back up. Something inside him was unlocked. A dark opposite, a shadow self. The person was stronger than him, stronger than anyone really. Even too strong for death to claim. The thing is Bruce Banner can die, but only during the day. The problem is when night comes, he drags him back. Bruce stares at the mirror, watching the Hulk beat against the glass, trying to break out as he drinks his coffee, thinking, well, that's new. It's been two days since the fight with Walter, and he hasn't dared to let him out since. Hulk defeated Sasquatch, draining Walter's gamma radiation, but he's been starting to suspect that something else came with that. He needs to talk to the Hulk, but he can't just let him free. So now it's probably time to try something new. Bruce grabs a piece of paper and a pen, and he closes his eyes, emptying his mind, letting the pen move on its own. Bruce's hand slowly begins to scribble down something, and when his hand comes to a stop, he opens up his eyes. He reads the word, home and he asks the hulk what does that even mean where's home meanwhile in california betty ross watches the news as the reporter explains that social media has been abuzz with its latest sighting of the hulk she turns the tv off wiping away the tears stating just stop her husband isn't back from the dead if he was why wouldn't he have let her know that hulk can't be bruce banner but elsewhere at an undisclosed location. A group of monitors watch all people, living or dead, that Bruce has ever sought out to for help. One of the guys monitoring states that this is kind of creepy. This one just isn't a civilian. It's General Ross's daughter, the boss of our boss. It feels like... But the voice of General 14 tells the group of monitors that everyone on the screens in front of them is not civilians. They are not friendlies. They have all given aid and comfort to the Hulk before, and that makes them an enemy. As you were. As 14 closes the door, Dr. Clive sips his drink, asking, would Ross mind if he knew? 14 tells him that it is not Ross's business to know. The general was too close to Banner, and right now, he understands that. But it is best for Ross to focus on Steve Rogers' situation and leave the Hulk operations to a trusted second in command such as himself. As the two walk into the next room, a giant test tube glows green as Del Fry's body floats in it. And Clive asks, how's their little buddy today? Clive's assistant, Charlene, says that it's been the same since they dug him out of that grave. His pain receptors are still off the charts. He's in agony. If they would just make some adjustments to the tank, they could possibly reduce them, eliminate them even. Clive takes another drink, stating, yeah, except recalibrating the system would take days. And what would that get them? Forget his little fee-fees. Where are they at on replicating him? Another tech, Jay, says, not much. They're pretty sure that what caused this in his blood, some kind of gamma serum. Well, it's like cracking a code in a dead language. Clive sips more of his drink, telling 14. See, we can't make progress without an actual Hulk, but not just the Hulk, a Hulk. Like Cho or Walters, people might actually miss them. 
14 thinks for a second and then he asks, what about Sasquatch? A short while later up at the Alpha Flight Space Station, Walter sits up from his bed as Carol walks in stating that she just got off the phone with General 14. He's currently in charge of the US Hulk operations, ex-USAF like her, and he played that card a lot, building up a rapport. He's a very charming man who very charmingly threatened him with legal injection, after extradition and trial of course. For what it's worth, he was very apologetic. He'd love to make it all go away. Pip scoffs, he bets. But what does he get in return? Carol says that's the thing. If her team secures Banner for the proper authorities, Walter is exonerated. If I say no, they're gonna take him. Shaman then asks, how are they supposed to defeat the Hulk? Carol tells him not this team, her other team. Back on Earth, Bruce walks down the road thinking, we really are going home. My home, that is. It makes perfect sense. We're going to the place where I'm the strongest to defeat whatever it is that's inside of us. As Bruce holds out his thumb at a passing car, he realizes that the light coming towards him isn't a car. Bruce looks up to see Carol and he says, hello, always a pleasure, or this business. The Avengers have been very good at leaving me alone since I came back. Carol stares, stating that the Hulk helped save the world. It earned him some rope, but this is a very different set of Avengers. If she's being honest, the rope's about to run out. As other members of the Avengers appear, Jennifer looks at Bruce I'm rather disappointed. As she starts to change into the She-Hulk, stating, You're disappointed? I almost died. I was in a coma, and when I woke up, I found out that you killed yourself. You knew what that would do to me. You forced my friend. Had to guilt Clint Barton into doing it. You knew what that would do to. Thor grabs Jennifer by the shoulder, telling her, Control yourself. Jennifer says the Hulk knows. She knows. Carol places her hands on her hips, stating that they're not here to hurt him, but he's gonna come with them. And Bruce asks, right now? Are you sure about that? The sun is down. Carol tells him yes, they know about his patterns. Every sighting has been the same. The night is his time. And in order to set the Hulk free, Bruce Banner has to die. Bruce grits his teeth, stating, that's my secret. I'm already dead. As soon as Bruce finishes, his body begins to change and it begins to grow. The Hulk lunges forward, cracking Thor across the face with enough force to knock a tooth out of the mouth of a god. Thor stumbles back, stating, by Odin. And Hulk tells him, Daddy can't help you now. Captain America leaps in front of Thor, protecting him from another hit, but the Hulk punches the shield, stating, Look, it's Captain Hydra. If I rip your head off, are two more gonna come out? Captain America struggles holding the Hulk back, stating that that wasn't him. Black Panther leaps on onto the Hulk's shoulders, telling him, perhaps this will bring you to your senses. And he shocks the Hulk in the head. Iron Man readies the Hulk Buster suit, stating, let's hope. If not, I got a big gun parked about 10,000 feet away. Black Panther leaps off as Iron Man fires into the Hulk, yelling, some weapon should be a last resort, and Code Helios is one of them. Captain America helps Thor to his feet, asking if he's okay. He's never seen him get hit that hard. Thor slowly struggles to get up, stating, he's stronger than he was, vastly so. I've seen the naked men of souls smell the lies of their hearts, hidden even from themselves. Captain America says, you might have a concussion, you're rambling a lot. Lies don't have a smell. And Thor asks, are you sure? You live in the mortal world, one of science and law. Where I come from, I live in a world of legend and symbol, the world of the gods. What I'm suggesting is that in its rage, its pain, in the shadow of its Armageddon, your mortal world may have produced something very close to a god, or a devil perhaps. The Hulk laughs, ha ha ha, devil Hulk works for me. The Hulk then thrusts both of his hands into the Hulkbuster suit, stunning it. And the computer inside tells Iron Man that he needs to eject. The Hulk rips the arms off of the suit and continues to beat on it, trapping Iron Man inside. Black Panther tries to pry open the suit, shouting, That is enough! Iron Man will die unless we get him out of there. This man is my friend. Hulk asks, Friend? And then he takes the Hulkbuster suit, smacking Black Panther with it. Iron Man yells that he needs to use the manual release, and he shoots off into the sky, holding the helmet of the Hulkbuster. As he goes up higher, he tells everyone that he's unlocking the big gun. But Carol yells that there are civilians down there. He tells her that the civilians are going to be out of the area thanks to Alpha Flight transports, right? And Carol tells him, Maybe so, but these are the homes of hundreds of people. Tony. Captain America radios in stating, I'm with Carol with this one. Let's leave Code Helios until we're out of options. We still have one last chance. Just then Jennifer transforms, charging and punching the Hulk, yelling, Hulk smash! Bruce hurts Jen, hurt his friends. So now, now? Hulk catches the punch, getting up, telling her, you're mad. And the matter you get, right? Funny how that works. I was everything Banner wanted to hide. Everything he wanted to pretend he wasn't. You were everything Walters wanted to show the world. Only now the line between us is harder to see, ain't it? What do you think, Hulk? Hulk smile wide and then She-Hulk yells, No, Hulk is not. I'm not like you. Hulk laughs, huh, gotcha. 
Then there's a booming wham as She-Hulk is knocked across the small town. And Iron Man radios in stating, He'll kill someone soon, Carol! I swear to God, that's how this ends. Carol states that there are no life signs in range, but Iron Man, this isn't, he tells her. It's settled. Cross your fingers because we only got one shot at this. Carol calls out over the comms, don't do it! And Iron Man tells her, we have no choice. Systems green, firing the Helios laser! As he hits the switch, the giant floating laser begins to charge and then it fires a cloud-piercing blast from the sky. A short while later, as the dust begins to settle, Captain America looks down at the charred remains of Bruce Banner telling Black Panther that this isn't right. He only hoped that it didn't hurt too much. Iron Man's projection tells him that it most definitely did. The Helios later was laced with UV radiation. Effectively, it was a beam of hard sunlight. It was the only thing that we had on hand that could hurt this new Devil Hulk. Captain America says not to call him that. That wasn't the devil. That was my friend, and you killed him. Black Panther then says that this is only a temporary measure. Bruce Banner may not be dead, but I suspect that without these UV drones, the Hulk will rise again. Ghost Rider and his vehicle are healed, but Thor's fractured skull will need further treatment. As for Jennifer, she's alive and relatively uninjured. But she won't say what it was that the Hulk said to her. Iron Man adds, let's not forget, he almost killed me. Black Panther turns away, stating that without the Helios weapon, without this sacrifice, they'd be buried by their own dead tonight. My conscience remains clear. Captain America looks back at Bruce's body, stating, that's good for you, your highness. We got another problem anyway. We beat him. We've got him. Now what do we do? Later inside of Dr. Clive's lab, Dr. Clive asks, what could be done? There were protocols. Even the Avengers can't fight City Hall. So Ross handed you to Secretary Ross, having delegated command of the Hulk operations, passed you straight onto us. We made you nice and comfy in time for the next sunset. Welcome to Shadow Base, Banner. I want you to think of what's coming as a little poetic vengeance. You've caused a lot of people a lot of pain over the years, and now it's our turn. As Hulk's floating head in a jar listens, he tries to yell, but without his lungs, his screams go unheard. Dr. Jeff Clive's team of scientists take the responsibility of dissecting the world's strongest hero very seriously. A $7 million hydraulic arm using adamantium scalpels are carefully cutting into the Hulk's flesh, and that's just for his heart. There's something very interesting about the Hulk's body that Dr. Clive and his team are finding out. Even though the Hulk is uh, dead and cut into many pieces, his body can still put itself back together. It is now Clive's job to understand the science as to why that is even happening. He looks to his team asking if anyone has any ideas and then he notices Hulk's head trying to talk. He spins back telling the Hulk that he really should see this. He's just a giant head trying to talk with no air in his lungs. Science isn't his specialty, is it? One of the Hulk's severed hands curls into a fist and extends his middle finger. And Clive says that he's as charming as ever. He picks up the two halves of the Hulk's heart and he holds them together. And as they start to weave back together, Clive says, see, good as new. But now the question is, why isn't the rest of his body regenerating? Why isn't the separated parts just replacing the old ones? Meanwhile, up at Alpha Flight Space Station, Carol Danvers looks out into the void of space asking where did he go? Ross denies all knowledge. General 14, the man who requested the mission, cannot be found. Requests for information are misfiled. Washington contacts are fired or reassigned without rhyme or reason. So did the US government lose the Hulk or kidnap him? Walter says, well, if Banner's above ground, I could track his gamma signature, unless he can suddenly change it at will now. Carol tells him, good, because as of now, you're back on active duty. You may not be Sasquatch anymore, but you are a noted gamma researcher. I'll be putting together a new task force, headed up by Dr. Lekowski to locate said threat. Jackie then asks, does this new task force have a name? And Walter laughs, <laughs> what else would we call it? The next day, back on Earth in Clive's lab, he sits in his chair telling 14, no. He doesn't think it's funny. Gamma flight is the last thing they need. They need to find a way to get Carol Danvers off their back or no. Yes, he will proceed as ordered. Clive sighs, hanging up the phone and his assistant asks what's wrong. Clive groan, stating that Danvers gave a press conference yesterday, shining a spotlight right on them. 14's response is to go dark and cut their ties. The assistant says, but it will take days for them to become operational again, and Clive tells her that he knows it's not what everyone wants to hear at the end of a long shift. Just go get the 
first ready for transport. He'll start prepping Red Dog just as soon as he figures out this jigsaw puzzle. As Clive looks back at the Hulk, the Hulk, well, he smiles. Clive then asks, does he think it's funny or something? His superhero buddies are making this difficult. Difficult for him! Everything they've done to him here, it's just the start. Next, they're gonna rip him apart, cell by cell, and then cut that smile right down to the bone. Maybe they'll pop each one of his eyes. How would he like that? Pop them like big old water balloons. The Hulk begins to laugh, and Clive shouts, What's so funny? We're experimenting on you. We're gonna turn you into a weapon. We will learn all of your secrets, how your heart beats, how your fingers move, all of it. We will find out exactly what you can do. Oh God, the Hulk's smile, it gets wider. And Clive asks, you, you let us do this to you, didn't you? You wanted us to test you because if we know what you can do, then so do you. One of the Hulk's hands snaps its fingers, breaking the glass of all of the containers holding his parts together. And they all come crashing to the ground. As the Hulk's body begins to reattach itself, it grabs onto Clive's body and it begins to form around him. He struggles to get free yelling, please, I'm sorry, please don't, please. But the Hulk straightens his head on his neck as Clive's arm is absorbed, telling him, not sorry enough. You wanted science, a set of rules for me. Big mistake. See, science is the other one. When you hurt him, I take it personally. The Hulk punches his way through the walls and earth, climbing back up to the world above. And as the sunlight touches his skin, his body begins to change back into a twisted pile of flesh. Bruce covers himself with Dr. Clive's coat and he begins to talk, all while hearing somebody laugh in the back of his mind. As the ringing of the shotgun fades into the distance, Bruce falls to the ground holding his stomach, stating, It hurts! And the Hulk tells Bruce, I bet it does. You knew this was too big of a risk. The landowner comes out asking, Did you think you'd come here and steal my washing line? That was self-defense. Law's on my side, meth head. Bruce coughs. <coughs> I'm sorry. And the Hulk tells him, Just remember, this is what happens when you don't listen to me. A short while later, the man in the suit tells the landowner that he appreciates him answering his questions. He was lucky to get out of that situation alive. And the landowner asks, Lucky? That thing smashed everything that I owned. The man in the suit says, Well, he let you live. Thanks again. The landowner asks, What are you talking about? And as the man in the suit holds out his hand, his fingers begin to mesh together to form a gun. And then, well, it goes off. As the landowner falls to the ground, the man in the suit radios in stating that this is Agent Burbank calling Shadow Base. Are we live? Is it secure? The operator tells him all clear and Burbank says, piggybacking off the 911 call was a good idea. I got here well before the cops did. Hulk's sighting is confirmed. Gamma trails leading in a very particular direction. Tell Red Dog that we know where he's going. He's going home. Miles ahead, the Hulk is making his way home, thinking maybe where he's going isn't home. He was always there when his father killed a part of Banner. Maybe he was always there. And this is the place where he took his first breath, where he made his mark. Los Diablos, the test site for the first Gamma Bomb, the place of the Hulk's power, the place where he is the strongest. But he's here for a reason. Whatever got into Lakowski, got into him. And it's wearing the face of Banner's father, the face that they hate. And for that, they need to be stronger. This is my ground where I can win. I can smash him, that's the plan. Or is it? The Hulk looks in the window of the old guard tower, seeing Brian Banner's face and says, It was you. You're the one who put the idea of coming here into my head. This is where you get power, where I think I can get rid of you. The Hulk shouts, asking, Do you really think you can get rid of me? Come out, Dad. Let's see it happen. Get out of my head and fight. He smashes the small tower into the ground, stating, Nice try. Getting me mad? That might have worked on another Hulk, but not me. I'm in control. I'll find a way to get rid of you. I won't play your... Wait, what's that sound? Just then a red hulking man with a ball and chain lands shouting, Hulk, come on, it's time for us to get back in the ring. The Hulk stares for a moment thinking that he knows this man. His name is Carl Creel, the absorbing man, and he's had an upgrade. Carl yells, come on, and Hulk asks him, is this my father playing another trick? Well, too bad. I'm the one in control now. The Hulk begins to run towards Carl, shouting, I don't need this. 
And Carl gets ready to swing his chain, telling him, Yeah, you do! Carl lets go of the chain, sending the wrecking ball out, but as the Hulk dodges it, he punches Carl in the side. Hulk lets out a painful scream, looking at his hand, asking what just happened. That hit hurt me, not Creel. Creel gets up laughing, asking, Ha ha! Ain't gonna be that easy for ya, is it? He throws his chains around the Hulk, and as the red gamma radiation covers the Hulk's body, his powers begin to fade. The Hulk grits his teeth, kicking Carl with what strength he has left, and as Carl's body flies away, the Hulk gets a glimpse of himself in a shard of glass. Creel was draining him of his power, the same way that he drained Legowski. He gets up, his loose skin hanging off his bone, groaning. All right, round two. Inside Carl's mind, though, he looks around as the world begins to break, asking, What's going on? A giant head tells him, You cannot see what we are. You're speaking to a mask. Your body above is a useful one, but your mind is here below it all. You have had many chances to walk away from this, but there's no changing fate. You're a creature of sin, the oldest kind, pride, and it's a killer. Back in the real world, Hulk watches as Carl's body splits in half, leaving a shambled body with his spine and skull staring right back at the Hulk. Inside his mind, Carl cries, I'm sorry, but all Hulk can hear is a gurgled silently. The Hulk gets up telling him, not yet, but you're gonna be. Off in the distance, Agent Burbank watches through the scope of his rifle, stating that they're not gonna believe this, but they need to patch into his visual feed now. Fourteen asks, what's going on? Burbank says, whatever the absorbing man's body absorbed, it's doing something weird to itself. It should be dead, but he's not. Is he winning? Carl flings his arms forward to drain more radiation out of the Hulk. Sorry! And the Hulk shouts back, NOBODY CARES! We can both absorb Gamma, so I can take it right back. You won't be getting any more out of me. Carl punches into the Hulk, and his eyes glow green, yelling, NOW I'M GONNA TAKE IT BACK! He reaches out, grabbing the base of Carl Creel's spine, ripping it out, asking, Does that hurt? Well, here's your ball and chain. He takes the spine and the skull, swinging it around into Carl's body, shattering it into a million pieces. Just then, a light shines down on the Hulk, and from their airship, Walter Legowski says, Great, he's gone and torn someone in half. He calls out over a speaker, Hey, this is Walter. And the Hulk calls back, asking, What do you want? Walter tells him, Well, we don't want any trouble, but we do have weapons locked on to you, so... Before the Hulk can answer, he's shot in the eye by Burbank. And Walter yells, Just so you know, that wasn't us. The Hulk grabs onto Walter's ship, shouting, Hulk smash! And he throws the small ship into the ground. The Hulk begins to rub his eyes as growing back, asking, Where's Creel going? But then it hits him. The green door. He yells out to Carl, telling him, I know what you want. But Puck appears before him, telling him, Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know what you want. A couple of spare vertebrae, right? Hulk tells him, don't do it. And Puck pulls the trigger on his gun, firing a hole right through the Hulk's chest. He falls to his knees telling Puck, you need to stop him. And Puck says, sure, you just gotta stay down, right? As Creel reaches the blast site, Hulk reaches out, crushing Puck's gun, telling him, it's the Gamma. Creel is going after the rest. When the bomb went off, it opened up a door, a green door, but it didn't open all the way. If Creel absorbs the last bit of Gamma in the soil, he'll be able to tear open that door. Jackie pulls herself out of the wreckage of the ship, asking, what's gonna happen when he does? But as she says that a blinding green light shines as the door is opened, and that green begins to turn to red. The Hulk watches with Jackie asking, what the hell's going on? And the Hulk tells her, we're too late. The door is open, and as for where we are, isn't it obvious? We're where we've always been, where everyone's always been. After you enter that door, well, welcome to hell. With everything around them turning to ruin, the Hulk walks, stating, How do you get to be what you are? Jackie asks, Really? That's what he wants to talk about after all of this? She just watched a man die when she asked him that. She wasn't exactly thinking straight. The Hulk laughs, telling her, <laughs> That's when the truth comes out. You aren't the first to be obsessed because I broke your house. It happens. But you would be the first to climb into some gamma machine, imagining what it would be like to be me. Jackie pauses for a moment and says, No, she can't imagine it. What it must feel like to feel that rage. To be able to feel that rage. To be allowed to feel that rage. After everything that he's done, all of the towns that he has destroyed, the people that he has killed, 
Though not many, but still, six months later, he's on the Avengers. All is forgiven. He was shot into space so that he could live in peace. Your anger is indulged, respected even. Hers, it's dismissed, if she's lucky. So yeah, that is what she's been thinking. How does she get her piece of that pie? How does she get to be what he is? The Hulk looks back and tells her, Ha <laughs> ha, that's good. Now you talk about anger like it's something that needs to be let out. Like it's useful. Like it can get things done. You aren't looking away from it or calling it another name. You're not ashamed of it. Now the question is, if you could step into a Gamma machine, would you? Jackie tells him, of course, who wouldn't? But just then, the two of them hear a voice from behind them stating, What's it like, Doc? Being the Hulk? I'll bet it was a gas. Hulk spins around hearing a familiar voice, but what he sees is the hollowed out version of Rick Jones. And he asks him, is it really you? Meanwhile, Creel says over and over that he's sorry. He let this happen because of his stupid pride. He let this in. A hand reaches down to help him up, telling him to trust him when he says that evil has always been in. Creel starts getting up asking, who is he? And Puck tells him Eugene Judd, codename Puck. Sometimes it's from Shakespeare, sometimes it's a hockey joke. But they can't really get too comfortable here. There's a little bit of everything happening right now. Science, magic, all of that stuff. You may have opened the door, but you're also gonna help close it. Back across the way, Rick says, golly, doc, you're in real bad shape. Jackie asks, didn't Rick Jones die? And Hulk tells her, he did. So Rick asks him, what are you gonna do? Hulk pokes his finger into the empty eye sockets of Rick Jones, stating, You're just a skin repeating old lines. And another voice then calls out, stating, Baby girl, don't look me in the eye. Jackie looks back, stating, Oh God. And Hulk says that he's gonna have to take a guess and state that that's the late Mr. Gee. Jackie runs over, stating that they need to get him out of here. But the Hulk grabs her, telling her to just leave him. Jackie shakes the Hulk off, stating, No! You can't just leave him here! We need to! He died because of you! My father died from the stress of trying to put our lives back together after you destroyed it. He worked himself to death. What do you know about that? Who cares about him that much? The Hulk looks up, pointing. There's that guy. Thunderbolt Ross walks up, telling them, Milksop, got no guts. Hulk tells him, Yeah. Banner's father-in-law cared. Maybe not in the way that you think, but that can't be right. He's not dead, is he? Ross's body begins to change into the Red Hulk. And Hulk tells Jackie, yeah, that's how much Ross cared. Cared enough to make sure that he would kill me. You might want to step back. The Red Hulk charges forward, punching Hulk in the face. And then he throws another with the Hulk catching and stating, that was a nice punch from a hollow man. Red Hulk keeps swinging with Hulk asking, what happened? Did you die and it actually stuck this time? You could have been a better father to Banner, but you just couldn't leave it be. You couldn't leave them alone. Hulk grabs Red Hulk by the face, stabbing his thumb into Red Hulk's eye, telling him, You dead now? Good. I'll kill you twice. Hulk takes another hand and drives the thumbs into the Red Hulk's eyes, pulling apart with what strength he has until Red Hulk's body is ripped to pieces. But he doesn't stop there. He keeps punching and panting. <gasps> Hulk, kill! Hulk, kill! Hulk, kill everything! Watching down from the entrance of the green door is Brian Banner. And he asks, you see? Just like I've always said, the Hulk is a monster. Believe me, son, you're better off without him. And maintaining the green door portal, keeping it open, is none other than Bruce Banner himself, separated from the Hulk, screaming in pain. But where did the hatred that Brian has for his son Bruce come from? Well, it all began when Bruce was born. Brian started to drink, a lot. After one night of coming home and stepping on one of Bruce's toys, he made it perfectly clear. He hated him for what he did to his wife. The simple fact that he existed upset him. His mother was happier before he was born. Now he's just some little monster. Brian threw his drink at Bruce's toy building, telling him to put it away. And when Bruce looked for comfort from his mother, his mother told him to listen to his father. That was when Bruce started to feel the rage inside of him. He took the glass and used it to break down his toy, stating, Smash! 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 The rage persisted on in the present form of the Hulk, as he beats the last little bit of flesh out of what was once Thunderbolt Ross. The Hulk punches the flabby remains of the Red Hulk's face, shouting, Kill everything! Hulk! 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 Smash! Jackie runs over to him, telling him to stop. She's gonna need him to stop. Okay, big guy? 
The Hulk subtly snaps back to reality, stating, Hulk hurts. All the time it hurts. Why? Why have the Hulk hurt so much? Jackie tells him that she doesn't know. She's sorry, but the Devil Hulk. Can she speak to him? Can the Savage Hulk let the Devil Hulk out for her? Hulk stares for a moment and then says, Okay. And he begins to wipe away the tears. He clears his throat and he tells her, Sorry, the big guy. He's mostly inside these days. But when he really loses it, well, you saw what happens. The Hulk calms down and Jackie says that she's got another question. How long has Devil Hulk been in charge? Banner has disassociative identity disorder. That's a known fact. The Hulk is just one of those personalities, but lately, Devil Hulk's the one who's been running the show, isn't he? Hulk tells her, someone had to, but not during the day. That's Banner's time. Jackie points to the sun, stating, oh yeah? So where is Banner now then? Hulk looks over, stating, I'm not sure, but I got a pretty strong hunch. It's over on that cliff. Up on the cliff, Brian tells Bruce, you understand, right? I was still a young man and your mother, well, she once loved me dearly. Growing up with your grandfather in a house, I knew I was unworthy of her love and that's why I never wanted children. But as time went on, I was loved. I was respected. A rising star in the field of radiation research, gamma radiation. Back then things were simple. Gamma radiation behaved unpredictably. Surely there was a secret as to why it did those things. One night, after staying out late, I closed my eyes, and that's when I saw it. There was something out there searching for me. There was a grotesque presence looking back at me through the crack of the door. A nightmare cellar world underneath the floorboards of everything. I had seen his terrible eye, and nothing could ever be the same. Later that night, after coming home, that's when Rebecca told me that she was pregnant. The birth was difficult, and your mother nearly died, but it didn't matter anymore. The love for me had been replaced, and it was all your fault. And you killed me in cold blood. As Brian begins to get mad, he stops himself saying, No, it wasn't you. It was that monster who cast me into this hell. But things changed after the bomb. You opened up the green door and thus you set me free. The sun's risen. High noon in hell. He's coming. Just then a giant mass begins to take shape, reaching out to Bruce Banner. Jackie watches, stating, It's late. That thing. Who can fight that? It's the end. And the Hulk scoffs. <laughs> that creep? He's not the end of the world. Jackie asks, how do you know? And the Hulk looks back smiling. Because that's who I am. Creatures begin to pour out of the giant green mask and the Hulk asks, did you hear him? I'm the Hulk and this is my house. He begins to fight back against the creatures, but as more and more come, he hears Rick Jones telling him, Coolin, mister. Rick then begins to change forms to help the Hulk, but also on the cliff, Puck and Creel get into position. Puck tells him, you know what you need to do, right? And Creel tells him, yeah. And he jumps onto the ledge. Brian looks back stating, ah, oh, it's you. And Creel says, I remember who you are, Mr. Mask. You let me absorb some of this rock and I'll be right over to talk to you. You're Banner's dad, right? I read up on you while on the joint. Dug up some stuff on Banner to give me that edge. But really, it's just a sad story. See, his old man used to beat him, used to, until he beat the ever-living crap out of him. Brian shots asking, you think you can beat me? Take your best shot. The fight below rages on as swarms of monsters slowly begin to overpower Rick and the Hulk. One monster begins to bite through Rick's body, reducing him to just strips of skin falling onto the ground. Back up top, Creel gets ready to attack, but then he stops, stating, Actually, I'm not going to fight you. I would lose, but I know a guy who doesn't. He takes out the Gamma Pillar, absorbing its power, rocketing off the cliff down to the only person that can help them, the Hulk. An explosion of gamma radiation lights up the area in a brilliant green glow. And from the center of it, the Hulk roars as he stands up with his newly found strength. He crushes one of the creatures shouting to Brian, Can you see me? What do you think, Dad? Brian yells, You are not my son. You never were. You are the son of one below all. The Hulk laughs shouting, I'm going to try to find some secret meaning behind it all. The secret is, the Hulk is the Hulk. He claps his hands together, creating a shockwave, destroying parts of the cliff and the giant green mass, sending Brian flying off into the distance. As the echoes of the shockwave fade, Hulk looks down at Bruce's body, telling him, That bought us a few minutes, maybe. But listen, Creel gave me the gamma back. I can close the door and I can bring us home. But if we're not together, we're not going to live through it. Bruce tells him, Good, let it happen. Finally, just let it happen. Hulk stares for a moment and then tells him, Look. I know you had me locked away. I know how scary it is. But before any of the others, 
I was the one protecting you. I'll always protect you. Because even though you're a stupid kid, I love you. Bruce looks back and the Hulk looks away, telling him, Someone had to. Come on, let's get going. Hulk takes Bruce's hand and after a moment of hesitation, Bruce reaches out to grab the Hulk's hand. Later that night, at the home of Betty Banner Ross, her phone rings, waking her from a sleep. She gets out of bed, shuffles away to the phone, and picks it up, asking who's there. It's nearly midnight, and if they don't say something, she's going to hang up. Bruce's voice, in the real world, out of the green door hell, says, Betty, I need to come home. I need to see you. Betty waits to process the voice and then asks, Where are you calling from? Benny Smash! I've always wanted to say that in a video, and so that I got to do it right there. Hope you guys enjoyed this full story. Let me know what you think about this horror take that they've done with the Immortal Hulk. Seriously, it's one of my favorite books coming out right now. I think it's one of the best books in general coming out in the world of comic books. Uh, either way, please hit that subscribe button. It allows us to basically send you the videos. You get the notification, you get the bell. It's how the whole thing works. You can also, if you want to show more support, come and join us over on Twitch. Every Monday and Thursday, we do various podcasts over there. And every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you'll catch us playing various video games over there. That's twitch.tv slash eligiblemonster. Either way, thank you for your support by watching this video. If you made it to the end of this, you, sir, are a hero. Because these videos are some of our longest videos. And if you made it to the end, let me know in the comments down below. Be like, Benny, I love your shirt and it's amazing. And your beard, maybe you should shave it. I want you to write that. I'm never going to shave it. But I want you to write that you, I should shave my beard. Because that will tell me that you made it to the end of this video. Thank you. I'll see you next time right here.